Hey all, uh, what's up? Today I want to talk to you about Cassandra Concepts Cheat Sheet. What I'll do is in this presentation is that I want it won't be a typical uh, Apache Cassandra presentation. I will go through the main concepts which are important to know. Usually when you read the documentation of uh, Apache Cassandra, you will have to pinpoint these uh, concepts. So I have aggregated the, the, the main concepts you should know, uh, some of which are hard uh, to find, and, uh, and place them here in this uh, presentation. We'll go through them uh, quickly. I have about 15 concepts to talk to you about, and this is what makes uh, Cassandra different than MySQL. I'm not saying it's better, but different from other uh, no SQL and uh, definitely uh, different, I'm not saying better than uh, MySQL, okay? So uh, let's uh, move on and begin with the first concept for you to know about the uh, Apache Cassandra. Well, the first concept is that the Cassandra nodes are communicating with the one another. Here you see node one connecting with node two and they are simply communicating in order to sync which have which data, which node has which data, because Cassandra nodes are practically the same. I mean, you can contact as a client each node, and the node you contact, if the data is not on uh, its local, then it would contact the nodes which do have the data. So this node, uh, which has a special name, but it's not special because all nodes are the same, is, is needs to know which node has which data. Therefore, the Cassandra nodes are communicating one another with one another in order to know which data resides on uh, which. So this is the first concept, let's move on. Okay, columns. Uh, Cassandra is a columnar database, uh, which means it has some focus on columns. And this focus means you can also define as many columns as you want. It's almost uh, unlimited, of course, depending on your resources, but it's different from typical MySQL uh, or other relational uh, database or other NoSQL database in which first it has the concept of a column and second, it is unlimited. This is very useful for, for, for some apps where you have different kinds of data for the same row key. So if you have a key, you can have multiple uh, columns. Not only you have uh, unlimited uh, columns, you add them dynamically, which means it's not uh, a schema that you define first as in other relational uh, database, but you just programmatically define which columns you want and thus this also means that they are unlimited because you can define more and more columns. Okay, so the next concept is that the tables are not connected. Uh, in most relational databases you, you, you have a, a connection from one table to another which allows you to do a complex queries, uh, relational queries, but it also has some uh, drawbacks. The drawbacks are that uh, when you partition your data, when your data grows inside, it's, it's being partitioned uh, across multiple servers. And when you have it uh, partitioned across multiple servers, then those relations are not really uh, useful. So here the tables are simply not connected. This is a standard uh, no uh, SQL uh, uh, architecture where you have less constraint and less uh, connection and Cassandra is not an exception. Okay, so um, <clears throat> not only you can have unlimited number of columns and you define them dynamically, different rows can have different columns. So one row can have one set of columns and another row can have different set of columns. Not only that, the different uh, rows are actually on uh, different uh, servers. Of course, this depends on the hashing and the consistent hashing that Cassandra uses. 
in order to partition the data. Uh, we have to say it at, at some point, but uh, there is of course no upfront scheme, again a standard, no SQL. We'll move quickly to the next uh, item. Uh, how do you locate your uh, row? You don't really uh, do queries, but in order to know where, uh, in order to locate your row, you must know its key. And when you know its key, you contact this row. Again, this is standard, no SQL terminology, uh, not really different than uh, others, uh, no, than others, uh, no SQL servers. Now about the partitions, the partitions are uh, based on the row key. Uh, what happens is a hashing algorithm, a consistent hashing. And so what you need to remember is depending on your key, the hash algorithm will put it on some server because Cassandra is for big data and when we have big data we need multiple servers depending on our definition of big data but it's on for mostly for data which uh, which we, can be only stored across multiple servers because it's too big for one server so what it's doing is uh, hashing your, your uh, row key and uh, uh, what specifically happens is that when your client needs to access a, a row, it contacts, it can contact any Cassandra node. And when it contacts any Cassandra node, which is node different than any other, they are all the same, all equal, remember. Uh, then uh, when it contacts it, this node is named session coordinator. Again, it's not different than uh, something, uh, than uh, any other node. Any, any node can be a session coordinator, but no two. It's simply the node that you have contacted. We name it session coordinator because you have contacted it. And this session coordinator hashes the row key, and then it delegates the, your query to the actual server. So it computes which uh, servers are in the partition range of your row key because of the consistent hashing algorithm. It's not just a mapping from one hash to one server, it's a, it's a mapping from one hash to a range. And in this range, it finds the server and the server that has your uh, key uh, is the one that will return the answer to the session coordinator, which will return the answer to you. Now, uh, remember again, this is an important concept in Cassandra. There is no master slave. All nodes are identical. Uh, of course, your data is not on all nodes. If you define the replication factor for three, then your data will reside only on three nodes. But on these three nodes, there is no master or a slave. Uh, another important concept is about what is uh, called hinted handoff. If a server failed, then, then the other nodes are uh, storing the failed operations in a buffer and then when the server is back to life, you replay these operations on the server and thus it's getting back to, its, uh, to the state that it should be. This concept is called hinted handoff. Okay, so what happens if you have a replication factor 3 and the client asks for a quorum write? A quorum write means that I don't uh, allow the write to return to the client immediately, but only after a quorum agrees that the write has uh, happened. So if we have a replication factor of 3, this reminds of Paxos uh, algorithm, then it waits for a majority of the quorum to agree with it. In this case, the majority is 2, so it will, the write will return to you only after two nodes in this replication set has ag have agreed on it. Another very important thing to know is that uh, Cassandra can uh, move data around the nodes. Uh, this can be very useful, especially in cases of failures or when you grow, you, ne you need to grow your cluster. So instead of, a, of a manually or, uh, or, uh, or uh, thinking very carefully, how do you grow your cluster? It's done uh, dynamically, but this also implies 
that Cassandra can move data around. Also, if, if a node fails, then it can move data around, etc., etc. A very, very important concept to know about Cassandra is that uh, this is highly important. I can't stress how much enough is that Cassandra is using append only uh, writes, which means when you do an update, when, whatever you do, it's an append. It's never an update. Uh, this goes uh, along very, very, ex uh, very good with the, the immutability uh, principle and it reminds of the event sourcing. It uh, reminds of it. It's not the same concept, but all these concepts are going together in, especially in distributed systems. Um, it's uh, very effective. Now, this means that uh, Cassandra is uh, write fast. So if you have heard that Cassandra is a, a, a write optimized, which means it's very good for writes, better than reads, then this is part of the reasons because a write is simply an append, although you may define you needed quorum, so it will actually wait for two, but uh, writes are append only. There is no random seek in the disk. Okay, but because the writes are uh, append only, what this means? This means that update and delete are also append only. And this means that uh, our data grows because if we do add, we append data. If we update, we append data. If we delete, we append data. So our data simply grows. If you are doing many, many, many updates and maybe many deletes, your data can grow uh, really fast. Uh, so it has a process named compaction. And the compaction is, uh, is uh, removing uh, the stale data, the deleted data that you have appended a record that says you need to delete it. Only the, only the compaction will actually remove it and it happens uh, from time to time. So does Cassandra really love writes? Well, it depends as always. It depends because if you have uh, many deletes, delete is actually the most expensive operation because uh, as part of it, uh, if you have many deletes, then um, it can cause you to have many compactions. And if you know Java and you're beginning to think uh, compaction, deletes, uh, GC, then you have the right intuition because this reminds of uh, GC. And when you expect heavy and plenty of compactions, then Remember that uh, it's not uh, the most right uh, efficient at uh, this point because of these many compaction. So you need to take this also in con consideration when you consider whether you, whether you adopt uh, Cassandra as the NoSQL or a different uh, NoSQL database. So uh, there are many uh, items like this. You should take into account also the previous concepts when you consider whether to adopt Cassandra as a NoSQL or a different one. In many cases, multiple types of uh, NoSQL might match or uh, MySQL or relational database might match your uh, solution. Um, uh, and with that, we come to a conclusion. You, my last uh, summary and conclusion for you would be to think and to check critically your, uh, your technologies. Uh, don't believe anything. I mean, if you heard that uh, Cassandra is uh, right optimized and now you think that uh, Cassandra is the best thing to, to write, then no, it's, it's not necessarily. And people don't say this explicitly. You will not find this explicitly uh, in, uh, in many places. You have to think about it carefully and to find those things many times uh, yourself. Many times it will not be exposed. Uh, so... Uh, that's it for uh, today's uh, Cassandra uh, concept cheat sheet. Uh, if you want other cheat sheets uh, for concepts, uh, please uh, let me know. Uh, you are more than welcome to comment here and let me know what you think. If you want uh, more summarized uh, data like this one, then please visit devatress.blogpost.com. It's simply a blog. Uh, thank you and let's be in touch. Bye.